Welcome to this Photoshop in 30 seconds tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are double, triple, quadrupling, and beyond down on the fun with the pen tool. We've been talking about it since last week. This is part four of the master class on the pen tool. We're covering all the tools and features in Photoshop, but the pen tool we're spending a lot of time on because it's such a deep, feature-rich, feature and important tool in Photoshop. Now today, we're moving on from what we were working on last week. I want to quickly hit you with a few tips um, that I was reminded of with regard to the pen tool before we talk about editing your paths using the direct selection tool. So first and foremost, a pretty cool thing you can do is you can go out ahead and cre create any old selection you like, right? And then right click within that selection as long as you have your default, uh, you know, shape option selected. If you have any of these options, I don't think this works. Um, but if you have your default options selected, you can right click and make a work path out of a selection. You can choose the tolerance. I like to go down as low as I can go. I think 0 0.5 is the lowest you can go. Hit OK and it converts that crazy selection to a path. You can see I have work path here and I can save this as, you know, selection, right? Because it came from my selection. I can deselect, but I still have that selection there uh, to uh, draw from. Uh, next up, Let's delete this layer mask that we've placed on the Eiffel Tower. It's because they would you like to delete it? Absolutely, I would. I'm going to select this uh, path. I'm going to go back to my layers, and I'm going to choose Layer, Vector Mask, Current Path. And now we've created a layer mask, but it's not a pixel-based layer mask. It is a path-based layer mask. So as you're going to see in a second, if I go ahead and edit this path, well, edit the vector, the path in the vector mask, that is, it's going to it's going to apply those changes to the mask just like a regular mask but the beauty of this is is i can use my pen tool to edit this mask i don't need to use my brush tool and worry about painting an exact perfect edge i can use my pen tool i can use the direct selection tool and we're going to talk about using the direct selection tool in just a moment uh, to edit uh, a path one of the other things you can do if you do have the path selected you can free transform a path we can go edit um, and go free transform oh, well we haven't selected the path let's go to the path select the path and we can free transform the path. I just use the hotkey command or control T. And you can see I can just stretch the path out. We're not stretching out any pixels or anything on any of the layers below. This is the actual path. I obviously hate that, so I'm going to undo that. We can do the same thing here on our vector mask. And if I stretch this out, you're going to see it's going to reflect on my image because we're not just... We are just editing a path, but it's a path that is telling a mask where to cut. So obviously, I don't want to do that because I do want to cut out the Eiffel Tower somewhat here. All right, so back to layers. We've covered vector mask, we've covered transforming a path and creating a selection from the path. Oh, one other tip I should show you before we jump into uh, editing a path. Let's say you're editing or creating a path and you go ahead and create the path and all you want is like this shape. You don't want to close the path and you want to go ahead and create another path. All you have to do is hit the enter key and it's going to save that path. You can see well it's placed it there inside of uh, alongside our tower path. We'll talk about how all that works in the next pen tutorial and the pathfinder and working with paths like that. But we've done that and we can go ahead now and create yet another shape and this one we could close off or we can just hit the enter key again and just have those two paths hanging out in there. Uh, let's undo that because I don't want those paths. And let's talk about editing a path that you have um, with the direct selection tool. So I'm going to zoom in here and we can grab the direct selection tool right here, direct selection tool. The selection tool or the path selection tool, you use that to select the entire path. Whereas the direct selection tool, you use it to select specific anchor points like just that one anchor point right there on the path or maybe just this one anchor point here on the path. So what we can do with this is we can select a point, right? Let's select this point, right? Then we can go back to the pen tool. We can grab the convert point tool and we can drag tangent handles out to make this a nice rounded edge. Of course, we can go back to the direct selection tool, hold down, well, just grab the tangent handles, right? And drag them any which way to change our selection. Now, right, let's say we're, we're, we're dragging this this way and we like where this tangent handle is on this side. We don't want this bit to change, but we want to flatten this part out again, right? I can just grab this and drag the tangent handle back in. Whoops. Let's uh, select that point again. I can just drag this tangent handle. If I can select it, here we go. Let's try it again. Third time's a charm, right? There we go. I can just drag that tangent handle back in. Well, no, I can't because both tangent handles move in unison. They move together. That kind of messes me up. So here's what you do. You hold down the Alt or Option key and you select that tangent handle and it allows you to work just on one side of an anchor point. You drag that sucker 
right back in and make sure our line is nice and flat across the top. That is an essential key to editing with the direct selection tool. You can also just drag a selection over, it's difficult to see, but I can drag a selection over part of my path and I can hold down shift or I can just use my arrow keys, but I like to hold down shift and use my arrow keys, it moves faster. And I can just move a chunk of my path any which way and it's not going to obviously move the anchor points which you haven't highlighted. So that's a great little thing to know about the direct selection tool as well. So we could uh, highlight like the entire top of the Eiffel Tower and stretch it up more, right? We don't want to do that, but just know that it is possible to do. And then just click anywhere to deselect and uh, make sure that you've deselected from your path altogether. So a few great tips and also how to use the direct selection tool to edit your paths very essential stuff, very useful stuff when you're using the pen tool. So for part four of the pen tool in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonTutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.